Yeah, Linda has made it before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not crazy about the Thousand Island as well. Everybody's so quiet. <laughs> Working out the details here. Friends, sisters, brothers, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And welcome to worship today at Emmanuel Presbyterian Church. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Yay, we are fine. We're, we're at Christmas Day today. So we've done Christmas Eve. Today is Christmas Day. And... Uh, and, and what a great day it is to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Um, I just have a couple of announcements. Uh, first one is welcome to Joyce. Uh, this is, yay. Uh, this is Joyce Kreiner. She is our, our, new, uh, our new pianist and uh, clavinovist. And uh, we are so excited that Joyce is able to join us. And um, uh, thank you to, to Sonny Saunders. Everything was so, uh, so up in the air last week that I failed to acknowledge Sonny's magnificent contribution to our worship uh, on her last Sunday. Uh, but at some point, uh, I'll, uh, like next week, I want to get a card. We'll all sign the card, and we'll we'll get that out to Sunny. Um, what a wonderful gift sh uh, she had has brought to to this church, and in just the short time that I got to experience her, it was really wonderful and just an amazing grace-filled opportunity for for Joyce to join us. So thank you, Joyce. Welcome. Um, I was reminded, too, that we have Christmas Eve bulletins available, and uh, those bulletins have the poinsettia uh, acknowledgments in them. So uh, those will be available, I guess, wherever you come and go from the sanctuary. Um, and uh, I guess, is there anything more that we need to know about poinsettias? Can poinsettias be taken? Certainly. Uh, yay. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Make sure they're, we remove them today because they won't be here next week, that's for sure. All right. They'll be gone. <laughs> okay. Uh, and are there any other announcements this morning for the life of the church? Well, then, friends, let us take a moment to center our hearts and our minds on things divine. Let us breathe deeply of God's Holy Spirit. Let us worship God. <laughs>
Friends, let's join together in our call to worship. In snow-capped churches and in sweltering sanctuaries, God's people gather in joy to celebrate a birth. With hopes littering our hearts like wrapping paper under a tree, we offer our thanks and praise for the gift of grace swallowed in love. With eyes wide open like little children, with hearts full of wonder and laughter, we join our lives with Mary and Joseph, with shepherds who ran to tell the good news. let us join together in our morning prayer. Grace dawned this morning, streaking our bleary eyes with bright shafts of beauty and goodness. Joy sang us awake with carols of wonder written by the shepherds, the tunes composed by children who could not sleep. Hope was fixing breakfast for us while we slept, toasting the bread and slathering it with jam, pouring us a cup of warm grace. We rejoice and give thanks, God in community, holy in one, our grace, our joy, our hope, even as we pray as your child taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Born that day was grace for the broken and bereft. Born that day was hope for the vulnerable and forgotten. Born that day was love for all of us. And as people filled with grace, hope, love, let us greet each other in the name of Christ. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. friends, let's join together in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, by the gift of your spirit, show us the word made flesh, good news of great joy for all, so that we may sing with angels glory in the highest and peace on earth through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And friends, please be seated. come up because um, we have no children today. Um, uh, so I will reserve my children's message until next week. And uh, uh, just a word about uh, some of the, the scripture and poetry that, uh, that we're going to experience today. I'll invite you to um, read some of the notes that I have written in the bulletin. Uh, some of these uh, Poets are, are people that are, are known to me and known to us in this community. Uh, this first one is by my friend Emily. And this is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, but before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Christmas by Emily Zavaro. Here it is, Christmas again, and Jesus came to save us from sin. We all get so busy with material things, we tend to forget who is king of kings. Let us thank God for sending his son to this troubled world that has come undone. The stories of and circumstances of Jesus' birth, we should remember, are laden with themes of darkness and captivity. These themes draw us in and we celebrate release into the light of Christmas morning. The prophet Isaiah's words capture the dawn of hope this way. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of a messenger who proclaims peace who brings good news, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God rules. Listen, your lookouts lift their voice. They sing together. 
Right before their eyes, they see the Lord returning to Zion. Break into song together, you ruins of Jerusalem. The Lord has comforted the people and has redeemed Jerusalem. This poem from Malcolm Geit called O Oriens expresses the mystery of this transition from darkness to dawn. First light, and then first lines along the east to touch and brush a sheen of light on water, as though behind the sky itself they traced the shift and shimmer of another river flowing unbidden from its hidden source, the day spring, the eternal primavera. So every trace of light begins a grace in me a beckoning. The smallest gleam is somehow a beginning and a calling. Sleeper, awake. The darkness was a dream, for you will see the day spring at your waking. Beyond your long last line, the dawn is breaking. And now we turn to the gospel according to John the first chapter with verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. The words of the poet Mary Oliver describe this world we enter now, where the winter is coming, it is here, but the shortest day is past, and the light grows stronger. It's entitled White Eyes. In winter, all the singing is in the tops of the trees, where the wind bird, with its white eyes, shoves and pushes among the branches. Like any of us, he wants to go to sleep, but he's restless. He has an idea, and slowly it unfolds from under his beating wings, as long as he stays awake. But his big, round music, after all, is too breathy to last. So, it's over. In the pine crown, he makes his nest. He's done all he can. I don't know the name of this bird. I only imagine his glittering beak tucked in a white wing, while the clouds which he has summoned from the north, which he has taught to be mild and silent, thicken and begin to fall into the world below like stars or the feathers of some unimaginable bird that loves us, that is asleep now and silent, that has turned itself into snow. And again, from the Gospel of John's first chapter. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, He authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, not from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his name among us, his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. How the Light Comes by Jan Richardson. I cannot tell you how the light comes, 
What I know is that it is more ancient than imagining, that it travels across an astounding expanse to reach us, that it loves searching out what is hidden, what is lost, what is forgotten or in peril or in pain, that it has a fondness for the body, for finding its way toward flesh, for tracing the edges of form, for shining forth through the eye, the hand, the heart. I cannot tell you how the light comes, but that it does, that it will, that it works its way into the deepest dark that enfolds you, though it may seem long ages in coming or arrive in a shape you did not foresee. And so, may we this day turn ourselves toward it. May we lift our faces to let it find us. May we bend our bodies to follow the arc it makes. May we open and open more and open still to the blessed light that comes. And from Matthew's Gospel. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod will soon search for the child in order to kill him. Joseph got up and, during the night, took the child and his mother to Egypt. He stayed there until Herod died. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, I have called my son out of Egypt. After King Herod died, an angel from the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said, and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. Those who were trying to kill the child are dead. Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus ruled over Judea in the place of his father Herod, Joseph was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he went to the area of Galilee. He settled in a city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. This poem, The True Meaning of Christmas, my friend Jody wrote in 2019 as wildfires were raging through Australia, where she is from, and where her son was. Uh, This year, I think this poem also speaks to those ordinary people, the everyday angels who helped people and saved lives. I'm sure you have read these stories uh, from all over our, our country and some particularly from Buffalo about people who truly rescued people, everyday angels. No sky filled with choirs singing of glory. No star-guided journey to worship a child. No angels, no manger, no stable, no shepherds. Just ordinary people to hold back the fire. The smoke in the air has blocked out the starlight while bone-tired fireys work through the night. Not angels just people, but my son who lives there is safe and alive. Flooding my news feed offers to help out a room, food, or money. Just say what you need. Not angels, just people, just ordinary people. And here's the true meaning of Christmas this year. Because of these people, these ordinary people, my son who lives there is safe and alive. And from Luke's Gospel. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. 
When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. Mary was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen? I haven't had sexual relations with a man. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her. Dawn of Salvation by Stephen Ray Richter. Raise voice far and wide over all the earth. Swell glories, glad tidings brought on by his birth. Dawn has begun and night's length is ending, ushered by sounds that creation is sending to us of mere worth, us who need mending. The day has arrived, tis on us at last, when all speech and sound are as one and held fast. Long nights of hatred and battles will cease. The bugles have ended, the songs are of peace. Hope, like the sun rising out of the sea, is rising before us, declaring us free from being the lees, from our agony, keeping us separate since ages of old from all that has bound us to Satan's stronghold. We join the nations, we sing in accord. The voice of the world is the voice of our Lord. Dawn of salvation. Songs that were sung on the night he was born. The song that was sung on that predestined morn from our lips has poured, like Gabriel's horn, of Christ who came the hope of the nation and ushered with him the dawn of salvation. Our final reading is from the Gospel of Luke the second chapter, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels returned to heaven, 
the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. And this final poem is by Lawana Rhine, the mother of Keith, who had made her transition from this life this year, just this fall. And so we honor her as well as seeing the connections between these poems, these scriptures, and our lives. Good day is the name of this poem. It's a good day to have a good day. Love is all around us. Today, celebrating the birth of Christ, Christmas is a good day. All of great religious and spiritual teachings bid us go directly to God the Father and Christ the Son. So let's call them forth and invoke them, God the Father and Christ the Son, as one in prayer, affirmations, and giving our intentions this day. This is how we enjoy a good day and have a good day. Go straight to the source and give praise and ask for what we want. Let us approach God through Jesus Christ. It makes it easy. Feel the presence of the God source. Today, Christmas Day, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ can open the way to a higher spiritual experience. So let's celebrate by repeating, I am the violet flame in action in me now. I am the violet flame to light alone I bow. I am the violet flame in mighty cosmic power. I am the light of God shining every hour. I am the violet flame blazing like a sun. I am God's sacred power freeing everyone. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. Yes, it is a good day to have a good day. Merry Christmas.
friends, please be seated. As we come now to that time in our worship when we join our hearts and our minds together in prayer, I invite you to share with me any joys or concerns, prayers or petitions you might have today. Buddy? Buddy. Buddy. Andrea. Say his first name again. Fred. Frank. Frank. Thank you. And I asked for um, her to come because in February she's not feeling well. So it's not necessarily the time that I'm feeling well. It's the time that she's not feeling well. And she's not feeling very well either. Thank you, Andrew. I'd like prayers for uh, Pastor Harry Speakman. He, uh, many of you will remember, he was here for almost a, a year uh, during COVID. But anyway, he is suffering with horrible arthritis where there's days he can't even get out of bed. And now he's got uh, pneumonia. And they've also said he's only at 30% capacity with his lungs. And he's on an oxygen tank. Um, so I'd just like to ask prayers for him. What was Reverend Speakman's first name? Harry. Perry? Harry. Gary. Harry. 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 Harry Potter. Ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Harry Potter. <laughs> Um, I'd ask for uh, continued prayers for my father. A couple weeks ago, I mentioned he had a spill. Well, in the hospital, they discovered he had a blood infection and a bone infection. They got that cleared, but now he's in rehab because he lost so much strength and stamina that he can't really push up and get out of bed or out of the chair by himself. So he's in rehab getting uh, some physical therapy, but at 89 years old, I just don't know how much muscle he can build. So, prayers for my father, um, Don. Thank you. I just wanted to ask for prayers for my youngest sister, Debbie. She has COVID. Friends, let's pray. Oh God, it is a good day to have a good day. And this day, we are grateful that we have been able to find our way to this place, to this sanctuary, to be surrounded by our friends and family, to continue our celebration of the birth of your Son and our Savior. And it is a good day to bring our prayers and our petitions to you. For we trust that you continue to hear our voices crying out, And so today, 
We pray for Buddy and for Frank, for Beverly and Bob. We pray for Harry and Don and Debbie and all of those who are known to us, whose names we treasure in our hearts. And indeed, we surrender to you all of those prayers, all of those petitions, all of those joys that we hold, that we treasure in our hearts. And we pray today for our larger world. We think particularly of Ukraine and the assault on that country for the turmoil in Myanmar, for the renewed oppression of women in Afghanistan. And we pray for every place where people, where men, women, children are not allowed to live life in its fullest imagining. You have created us wonderfully, O oh God. And yet there are those who would deny the full humanity of people. And so we pray. We pray for leaders everywhere. Every person entrusted with the responsibility of leadership or governance or service. That they would be filled with the the bright light, even the, the violet light of life. And know that we are all truly one human family. We celebrate with shepherds and with angels, saying glory to God in the highest heaven. And we are grateful for that privilege we are grateful for the ability to gather and to worship you. And we pray that all people everywhere might enjoy the, the ability to worship God as they see fit. I give you thanks for this worshiping community that has gathered together today to sing, to pray, to share our joys, our concerns, to be together once again. We pray for those members, those friends and family in this community who are not able to be here today. And we give you thanks, oh God. We give you thanks. And we ask this prayer and all the prayers of our hearts in that name that is above all names, the one who is our wonderful counselor, the one who is our mighty God, the one who is our Prince of Peace, the little Lord Jesus, who is now and forever asleep on the hay. Amen. And we come now to that time in our worship when we return a portion of God's blessings back to God. Friends, let's present our tithes and our offerings.
together in our prayer of dedication. May the gifts we share from the heart, just as yours was in that day, God, our good testimony. May we serve those who look for welcome, those who struggle with loss and grief, those who need to be blessed by hope. This we pray in the name of your child, Jesus. Amen. and so Then, friends, indeed, go out into the world repeating the sounding joy that Christ is born. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in your hearts now and forever. Amen and Merry Christmas.